Hey my loves, hope you're doing all kinds of well. Tis the season where I buy too many books. Well, that's year round, but particularly in spooky season, the best season. I get real ambitious with my TBR and I also, um, the willpower drops. <laughs> and I'm like, ooh, new spooky book? I need it, give me it. So I'm bringing you quite the book haul today. Most of the books I have here, I did buy specifically to try and read in spooky season. But I have picked up some new fantasy books as well and I've got a bunch of special editions so I'll save those to the end. But before we get into things I would like to say a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video which is Book of the Month. Y'all know I love Book of the Month. I get real excited when this blue box turns up at my door. <laughs> but Book of the Month is a super popular and fast growing online book service for readers who are in the US and Canada. That's where they ship to. And their mission is to promote new and emerging authors and to help you figure out what's going to be on your TBR that month. Each month the team over there vets hundreds of titles and curates a list of you of like five to seven new titles for you to have a look at and to choose from. They cover a bunch of genres and they now do audiobooks. So there is like a curated list of audiobooks for you to choose from as well. So you can go for either an audiobook which you can listen to on the app or you can go for a brand new hardcover. I get so hyped to see what they've picked every month. There's always at least two, I'd say, on the list that I'm really interested in. And this time, a couple of my most anticipated books for this year were on the list. So of course, those are the ones I picked. So first off, this was one of the add-on options. So there are add-on options as well. And it's The Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab. The next book in the A Darker Shade of Magic series, which is definitely a throwback for me. I loved it when I read it and I'm very excited to go back into this world and revisit these characters. Also, like, it's a decent sized book as well. So you know a lot of stuff's gonna go down in it. I cannot wait to read this. Oh my god, I just saw the bookmark. So cute. It's Halloween themed. <laughs> It says, boo is me, a reading break, and there's a little ghost. 10 out of 10 book of the month for that. And then the other book, which I think would be perfect for this time of year to read as well, very atmospheric, I'm hoping, is Stalling House by Alex E. Harrow. I've read The 10,000 Doors of January and also The Ones and Future Witches from this author, and I vibed, so high expectations for this. It's described as a gorgeously modern gothic fantasy. It features two of my favourite things, a spooky old house and a reclusive author. Therefore, you can see why it's one of my most anticipated reads of this year. Yeah, I am over the moon with these picks this month. <laughs> so if you are interested in book of the month, I can let you know as well that it is risk-free in the sense that if you want to skip a month, you can. You won't be charged for it if any of the picks that month aren't really tickling your fancy. Generally, they have one of the best prices for brand new hardback release fiction also, but you can get it even cheaper if you use my code this month. If you'd like to check them out, use code SPOOKY and you can get your first book for only $5. Five dollars guys. Nothing spooky about that price so if you want to check them out of course I will link them down in the description as well as the discount codes and you can have a look and see what other books they have on the curated list this month as well so that's all linked down below. So thanks so much again to book of the month for continuing to work with me and for sponsoring this video always much appreciated and for providing me with Starling House and Fragile Threads of Power. I am so hyped. <laughs> so let's crack on with this haul shall we? I have spooky things as I mentioned to talk about first. Starting off with an absolute cover buy. I saw this cover and I went and looked it up on Goodreads and I saw that it doesn't really have the best reviews so far from what I've seen but I'm hoping it's my cup of tea and then I weighed my options. I said hmm not the best reviews so far but this cover and the cover won. <laughs> so this is The Cherished by Patricia Ward. Now this it says is for fans of Claire Legrand, Rory Power and Danielle Vega. It's described as a visceral horror thriller in the vein of Midsummer, as one girl inherits a mysterious house from her estranged grandmother and a letter with sinister instructions. On the back here there's like a letter almost and it says dear Josephine if you are reading this it means I am dead. <laughs> Whenever a letter begins like that, you know some wild stuff's gonna happen. <laughs> so compared to Midsummer, and then also on the back it says for fans of Guillermo del Toro's Pan's Labyrinth. Pan's Labyrinth is one of my favourite ever films ever. So with all that being said, I'm very hopeful that I'll enjoy this one. <laughs> In other news, my left eye is just starting watering uncontrollably, so I'm not crying don't know what's happening. <laughs> okay, next up, this one seems like it's gonna be really fun, but then it also apparently gets really weird. Say less, sign me up. It's Patricia Wants to Cuddle by Samantha Allen. Already the title, cracking title. So it's kind of a spin on The Bachelor, but make it horror, make it gay, I think, and make it weird. So we've got contestants on a reality television dating show where they compete for love and also their lives. <laughs> Thankfully, we're only following like the final four women, I believe, or there's just 
the far left when things start kicking off, things start getting weird as they are in a remote place to start filming, like the big grand finale of it all. I saw some reviews saying that there was also points of view of women working on the television show, so anything to do with the behind the scenes of a reality TV show I always find really fun. Does anyone remember that like zombie big brother TV show? That was fab, if I can find it I'll put what it's called here. If you haven't watched that you totally should, but it's giving that because then this gets really grisly and kind of what the fuck did I just read vibes towards the end. I've seen from reviews, I'm hoping it's true. Tiberius, is he on my bookshelves? Just trying to get my plant. I'm gonna go bribe him with dreamies and I'll be back. <laughs> All right, bribes have been received. Let's continue, shall we? The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. Another two of my favorite things in this, we've got a true crime blogger that gets invested in a case, then gets to interview the prime suspect of that case. And she's a rich older lady in a spooky house that may or may not be haunted. And also, did she do the crimes? Did she kill those men? Everyone thinks she killed those men. They didn't have any evidence at the time to put her away for anything. And then we've got the paranormal element. Is there something paranormal happening here? Very excited to give this one a try, heard great things. I think this is a given, but if you've read any of these books in this haul, please let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I do not know what to prioritize this month <laughs> and I wanna read everything, but you know, who has the time? I really wish I did though, cause I also really wanna read this <laughs> this month. It's called You Look Better As A Ghost and it's by Joanna Wallace. Described as Dexter meets Killing Eve. It's a superb thriller, perfect for fans of How To Kill Your Family and My Sister The Serial Killer. Now I really liked both of those Books. Really liked both of those TV shows, so feeling hopeful. <laughs> Tagline is I have a gift. I see people as ghosts before they die. Of course, it helps that I'm the one killing them. <laughs> so, again, paranormal thriller vibes. It seems like it's gonna be fun. Everyone who's blurbed it says that it's laugh out loud funny. I love a bit of satire and a bit of dark humor, you know, so that's another one. This one I think maybe kind of falls into the realm of dark academia. This was an Ashley recommendation. She told me she was getting it and I said, okay, that sounds good, I'll get it as well. <laughs> and it's A History of Fear by Luke Dumas or Dumas Dumas? perhaps. But it's set in Edinburgh in Scotland. Hey, love that. <laughs> this one follows the harrowing downfall of a tortured graduate student who's been nicknamed the devil's advocate for his sensationalized crime. Basically, he murdered a classmate and then told everybody that the devil made him do it. So he's now the most infamous murderer in Scotland and he goes by the devil's advocate. Okay, but what really has me intrigued is that this guy, this devil's advocate guy, is found hanged in his prison cell, but they only go and find a handwritten manuscript that promises to answer the question that's haunted the nation for years was this guy unhinged or has he been telling the truth all along did the devil make him do it and i really want to read this <laughs> one i've had on my radar for literally years but just never picked up until recently it was recommended to me by one of my patreons and i said Okay, let me get that. It's The Dinner by Herman Koch. I hope I did some justice in that pronunciation. <laughs> I practice, but I'm really doubting myself now. <laughs> this is another thriller and we have a bunch of unlikable characters and I like nothing more than reading about unlikable characters. I'm here for the drama. I'm here for the entertainment. Give me bad people making terrible choices, please. <laughs> it follows a couple of couples who get together over dinner to discuss this horrific crime that they're both of their sons have committed. Their sons were caught on camera when committing this horrific violent crime, but they have yet to be identified. So it's the parents trying to figure out how do we handle this? Where do we go from here? How do we protect our sons? And I've just heard it's a great, like captivating read, you know? So I'm glad I finally picked it up. Oh, a fun one, a graphic novel. And this one is by Emily Carroll, who wrote and illustrated, I believe, the, I wanna say, through the Woods, it was called, the graphic novel, which I really like. Ah yes, it says it right there on the cover. <laughs> but it's a guest in the house, really pretty. Oh my God, you should need to see underneath the dust jacket. Look how cool this is. I'll only show the beginning as to not spoil, but we have some colored pages. But then I believe most of the story has black and white illustrations, gorgeous art style. It's about a young woman who marries a very, what she thinks is a very kind dentist, only to realize that there's a dark mystery surrounding his former wife's death. So this is the story of the two women, one living and one dead, who are connected by their marriage to a, what's said here is a mediocre man. <laughs> okay, this next one, Bethan, made me get. 
It's Camp Damascus by Chuck Tingle. It's described as searing and earnest. It's about the demons the queer community faces in America, the price of keeping secrets, and finding the courage to burn it all down. So Camp Damascus is the self-proclaimed most effective gay conversion camp in the country, so that's the setting. But the secret behind their success is something really disturbing, of course, because this is horror, and it's set at a conversion camp. So the people running this thing ain't, ain't good people. It goes all the way to the top. <laughs> so basically, it's a satire about evangelical Christians and N.K. Jemison says it's a genuinely terrifying nightmare. I need to read this this month. <laughs> this next one is a heist thriller, The Housekeepers by Alex Hay. I've had this one for a wee bit now. We've been to pick it up, haven't yet? Please egg me on. Please tell me to. <laughs> and this is described as Ocean's Eight meets Downton Abbey, the night of London's grandest ball. A bold group of women downstairs launch a daring revenge heist against Mayfair society in this dazzling historical novel about power, gender, and class. It sounds fun, right? It sounds really fun. Oh, this next one though. This next one I really want to try. Okay, it's The Centre by Aisha Manazir Siddiqui. So it's a horror slash thriller again, <laughs> described as a darkly comic, boundary pushing debut following an adrift pack Pakistani translator in London who attends a mysterious language school which boasts complete fluency in just 10 days but at a secret sinister cost. So people are learning languages real quick but but how? How? How is this being done? I need to know. Author of The Secret Hunger, um, Chelsea G Summers, who I haven't read A Certain Hunger yet but I really want to, um, said it's a banger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Gillian Flynn said it's absolutely stunning, thrilling, and unique. So that's true. I really, I really have high hopes for this. Another one I've been wanting to try for a while. I feel like the hype's maybe died down with this one somewhat, but it is Pen Pal by Dathan Alba. So this began as a series of interconnected stories that were posted online that kind of went viral and now it's been turned into a book. Or it was a bit ago. <laughs> I've heard there's a bit of a cult following around it, so I, again, I'm going into this with high expectations. Some people think it's maybe a bit overhyped, and I've heard others say it's like one of the creepiest things I've ever read so sign me up. In an attempt to make sense of his own mysterious and unsettling childhood memories, a man begins to reconstruct his past. As the games and adventures of his youth become engulfed by a larger story, he finds that it forms a tapestry of unbelievable horror that he never could have expected. And each chapter completes a different piece of the puzzle for both you and the narrator, and by the end of it all, you will wish that you could forget what he never knew. Really intrigued. I am really intrigued. One I picked up secondhand recently is The Family Upstairs by Elisa Jewell. One house, two families, three bodies. In a large house in London's fashionable Chelsea, a baby is awake in her cot. Well fed and cared for, she is happily waiting for someone to pick her up. But in the kitchen lie three decomposing corpses. Close to them is a hastily scrawled note. They've been dead for several days. Who has been looking after the baby and where did they go? I'm not expecting amazing things from this thriller, but I have heard good things from this author, so I wanted to try something, saw this, thought I'd give it a go. If you have read it, let me know your thoughts, please. <laughs> Next up, I have Notes on an Execution by Dania Kufafka. So this one has multiple POVs as well, another thriller. But this time, quite a unique POV. Um, the main guy that we're following has been convicted, is in prison, is on death row, he is a serial killer, and he's scheduled to die in 12 hours so you're following him through the process of what's going on in his brain what were his crimes but more so we're hearing about his crimes from the women in his life the women who survived a mother a sister the detective who put this guy away pieced it all together and they reckon with the choices that culminate in tragedy the impact on those in its wake and the possibility of redemption so i feel like this is going to be a discussion of the death penalty can someone be redeemed can someone change all that good stuff heard great things seen this around a lot recently so i'm hoping i like it as much as others seem to <laughs> this one's a brick <laughs> This one is a brick. It's Our Share of Night by Mariana Enriquez. This is the author of The Dangerous Smoking Bed, which I do have, but I haven't read yet. I was gonna try that before I picked this one up. Something about it called to me. I saw some more reviews, some more talk about it. And when I actually bought this, the bookseller said, um, give this one time, it's a slow burn. Like it gets weird and creepy. But you take some time to warm up, you know? So they said, even though it's huge, the time you put in, it's worth it in the end. So it looks like we're following a guy whose father can commune with the dead and he worked for something called The Order. For years, The Order exploited his father to do all these like satanic rituals and whatnot, or what I believe to be satanic rituals. <laughs> now The Order want a successor. They want our main character, Gasper, to work for them. That's all I really know. Don't wanna know too much. If I do end up reading it this month, which I hope to, I'm gonna go into it knowing that it's a slower burn, that it might take some time for me to feel fully invested. But if you have read it, please let me know your thoughts because I've only really heard good things for those who have actually gotten through it. But let me know. <laughs> this next one's just pretty. I just bought it because it's pretty. 
it's this. It's the Grimm's Fairy Tales by the Brothers Grimm, obviously. And um, yeah, it's one of these puffin and cloth bound classic editions. I have a few of these already and I saw this and I said, yes, so. That's that one. <laughs> I then have Speak of the Devil by Rose Wilding. Again, a bit of a cover buy, but then I looked into it and it's a classic whodunit, it looks like. We've got seven women who are stood in shock in a seedy hotel room and a man's severed head sits in the center of the floor. Each of the women, the wife, the teenager, the ex, the journalist, the colleague, the friend, and the woman who raised him has a very good reason to have done it. Yet each swears she did not. In order to protect each other, they must figure out who is responsible all while staying one step ahead of the police. It's probably going to be a case of me supporting women's wrongs with this one. I love these kind of books. A bunch of women coming together to protect one another, figure out who killed this bad man. Yes, yes. This one's also kind of a cover buy, but more so a title buy. Board Gay Werewolf. Board Gay Werewolf is the title of this book. I said say less. It's by Tony Santarella and this one is seems like it's going to be really funny as well. <laughs> We're following a 25 year old guy whose life seems kind of boring. He's a bit aimless but he is a werewolf so he's got that going for him. <laughs> I've seen reviews that says that this is a bit of a commentary as well on toxic masculinity, capitalism, wellness culture. So I don't know, I was intrigued <laughs> and I couldn't help myself. Oh this next one I didn't even know was coming out. I came across it by chance and I was like how did I not know this was this was a thing that was coming out? Um, but it's Rouge by Mona Owl. As in the author of one of my favourite books ever, Bunny, and also All's Well, Love Mona Howard. And it's a horror retelling of Beauty and the Beast. So we're going to have this complex relationship dynamic between the mum and the daughter in the story. And apparently it goes into discussions of like the impossible beauty standards of today. It's Mona Howard. I'll read whatever they write. So this is definitely being read this month. I'm going to, this is on my like MBR list, must be read list. One I've seen floating around the internet for a wee while now is The Thing Between Us by Gus Marino, which I think is kind of a horror that comes comments on or it goes into topics of grief and I do love that you know a horror book that you know talks about the real horrors in the world it's not just the ghosties out there but you know the real feelings of grief that you can experience through your life but it is quite a unique one because apparently it's about a couple that buy this like home speaker a bit like an Alexa I guess that seems wrong like something's wrong with it it gets creepy seems like Alexa might be possessed <laughs> but again I think the main topic is uh, like an exploration of grief so I'm probably really gonna like it <laughs> more dark academia next we have the St Ambrose School for Girls by Jessica Ward I really like the cover of this book we have a new girl who enters the scene at St Ambrose which is an elite New England boarding school she forms a rivalry with like the queen bee there but then someone ends up dead and there are of course secrets to be revealed. Very much all the things you'd expect in a Dark Academia-esque story and I love me a bit of that. <laughs> okay this next one I'm really excited to read because it's by Laura Stephen. This is Every Exquisite Thing. It's got really pretty sprayed edges on this and I'm really excited for it because I read The Society for Soulless Girls last spooky season by this author which was like a YA dark academia which I really enjoyed. It went into female rage and it was a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde vibe from what I remember. And this one is a retelling of um, the picture of Dorian Gray and the settings of prestigious drama school, the cutthroat Dorian Drama Academy. Our main character's new mentor offers her a chance to have a portrait painted by a famous but mysterious artist but then her mentor is found murdered her portrait is violently slashed and as the bodies pile up, Penny realises she's made a terrible mistake. I'm so down for this, so down for this. <laughs> okay, and these next two might not be specifically spooky season reads, but I still want to read them this month. I have Human Acts by Han Kang. I read The Vegetarian by this author and it's one that's definitely stuck with me. Don't know if I loved it or if I hated it. I think I loved it though. I think I fell on that side of things. <laughs> but this has come to me highly recommended by Folk I Trust, aka my Patreons. <laughs> so it's a historical fiction which takes inspiration from from a real tragic thing that happened in South Korea, this school uprising. So the Gwangju, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, uprising that happened in the 80s in South Korea. So in this book, we have a young boy who is shockingly killed during this uprising. It was a story that unfolds in a sequence of interconnected chapters as the victims and the bereaved encounter suppression, denial, and the echoing agony of the massacre. It's described online as a controversial bestseller. I'm not quite sure why it's so controversial, maybe, because it's maybe uncovering things that folk didn't want to be uncovered. I'm not sure but I'm intrigued to read it and then look into it more read more reviews um but I have fallen down a k-drama rabbit hole recently so South Korea is just kind of taken over my life recently. The things I know about South Korea are only through the media I've really consumed at this point but I really do find the South Korean culture um fascinating so definitely one on my another one on my like 
MBR must be red list. And the last one before we get into special editions and fantasy and whatnot is by James Islington. It's the Will of the Many, which you've probably seen on the internet everywhere recently. I know I have. So it is a fantasy, but it has some mystery elements and I've seen it described as Red Rising meets Name of the Wind. Red Rising and Name of the Wind, are you kidding me? Um, so James Islington wrote the Shadow of What Was Lost series. Is it the Icarus series? Lycanius series, sorry. <laughs> Which I still haven't read. It's on my TBR. It's been on my TBR for ages. I don't know why I haven't read it, but I bought another book by that author. <laughs> so this kind of has Dark Academia vibes from what I know, um, but it is Roman inspired and there is a unique magic system and also technology from what I've heard. It's set at an academy, folks, so I, I really want to read this soon. <laughs> I feel like a lot of folk have been reading this recently. If you're one of them, what did you think of it? Does it live up to the hype? Please let me know. Hi, my camera died and the sun's about to go down. This is Bella's tail. I now have tea <laughs> and we move. <laughs> so this is the part of the haul where we get into the special editions. Sorry, hang on. She needs my attention right now, apparently. You good? So I have a few books from Illumicrate here. This shiny beauty was in the um, Evernight box, the new horror subscription. I was on that wait list quicker than anything. <laughs> so the premise of this one is giving me night film vibes by Marisha Pessel. I should say it's Silver Nitrate by Sylvia Marino Garcia. I like their books. I've read quite a few of them at this point. <laughs> Set in the early 90s in Mexico City, this book follows a sound editor and a former soap opera star as they stumble onto an occultist who made a curious film decades before. The author describes it as supernatural suspense with a dose of film history. And it's all a mystery about a cult horror director. Right up my street, this one. This next one I have actually read and I really liked it. And I was surprised because I've read a book from this author previously and didn't really vibe, but I really vibed with Ava Reed's A Study in Drowning. Speaking of vibes, the atmosphere in this book was great. It felt creepy and sinister and it had a reclusive author. Are you sensing a theme here? We follow a main character who was obsessed with these fairy tales, these stories from her favourite author, which are about a mortal girl who falls in love with the fairy king. She's currently an architecture student and she gets the chance to renovate her favourite author's old creaky house. But once she gets there, she finds that she's not the only one there. She has a rival. This guy, a young literature scholar who is um, kind of going through the author's papers and things. And these two rival students find themselves investigating the reclusive author's legacy and working together. It includes some nods to Welsh mythology and fairy tales, as you'd expect. So there are some fantasy elements, but the vibes, y'all. They're very happy I have a beautiful copy of this one. Okay, and then Fairy Loot Editions. Um, so I get these free from work. I'm very blessed and highly favoured and these are some beautiful books I want to share with you because I'm really excited about some of these. In particular, I'm so excited to own this set of The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stevata. So we have all four here with like an ombre spine. They've got silver gilded edges. The end papers are lovely. The naked hardbacks. Oh, I just love them. This is one of my favourite ever like YA series I'd say and even though it is fantasy I think this is a great series to read around this time of year as well because again the vibes <laughs> like think magical forest practical magic style vibes can I stop saying vibes in this video <laughs> challenge emotional <laughs> another kind of witchy one we've got the sequel to Her Majesty's Royal Coven we've got The Shadow Cabinet by Juno Dawson I loved first book. It was great. It's just a big F you to JK Rowling and all the turfs out there. Transphobia is definitely something that comes up a lot in the book so I know that can be triggering for folk so go into it just knowing that. But it's about a bunch of like northern witches <laughs> that are like from Manchester and in this world there's a coven of witches who work for her majesty. Well it would be his majesty now. Ew. One of my favourite things about the first book was of course the clapback at um, JK Rowling's nonsense, um, but also the female friendships. Really liked, really vibed. The humour was great as well. It's completely on the nose as you'd expect, but I loved it. And I'm kicking myself that I haven't read the damn sequel yet. Need to get on it. Then the Fairy Lou August way, I think it was August, is Bonesmith by Nikki Pau Preto. Edges on this one, also very pretty. This is a YA fantasy that's described as like Gideon the Ninth meets Game of Thrones. We've got Ghost 
fighting warriors in a haunted wasteland. <laughs> so I'd say it's a darker YA fantasy. The Comp to Gideon alone has me itching to try it. Um, I know a bunch of folk who really enjoyed it and again another one I'm kicking myself that I haven't given a go yet. I then have Son of Blood and Ruin by Merrilee Laris. Apologies again if my pronunciation was completely off. And this is a story inspired by Zorro. We have a masked vigilante. It's an adult fantasy that's set in Spain in the like 16th century. We've got Mexican history and mythology. So it's a swashbuckling historical fantasy with magic, intrigue, treachery and romance. All of the things. Again, one I'd be intrigued to know your thoughts on if you'd tried it because I think this is one where I started it and then never managed to get back to it but the little bit that I did read at the beginning I did enjoy. <laughs> I'm losing light so I'm gonna rush through these next ones but another set. We've got the Drowning Empire set by Andrea Stewart. Now I've only read book one I know, I heard mixed reviews about book two, so I've been putting it off, but if anyone out there has read the whole series and can tell me it's worth it, please let me know. I mean, I have this beautiful set, I couldn't resist. Look at these edges. <laughs> the end paper's artwork as well is beautiful. The real star of this whole series is a character called Methy, and yes, that character is not a human, it is an animal. <laughs> the best characters in books, personally, in my opinion, are always the animals. <laughs> we have something called Bone Shard Magic in this, which is pretty cool. We've got a main character who's like lost her memories from five years ago. So she can only remember like the last five years, and we've got like a, a wanderer, <laughs> wandering man. <laughs> he is a smuggler from what I remember, um, who's like looking for a lost love. Their plots weave together and they're there are mysteries and the writing is really nice. <laughs> like a touch flowery, but not too much, you know? It's not, it doesn't overdo it. The world was rich as well. I really like the magic system from what I can remember. It's been a while since I read the first book, but I did enjoy it. So I really should get back on and read the rest. But just wanted to show you those. I also have my fairy loot edition of Fourth Wing. I don't think I need to tell you about Fourth Wing. You know about Fourth Wing. <laughs> oh, I should maybe mention though that I did enjoy this book. I didn't love it like I'm not screaming from the rooftops for to get everyone to read it. It's fun. It was an easy breezy read. Um, I was intrigued. I love me a sassy dragon, so as soon as the dragons were introduced, of course. I was vibing. But I did find it ultimately very predictable, but that's not always a bad thing, you know? Sometimes it's comforting to know where the story's gonna go. That's why I always like rewatch shows and things, because it's comforting. So I'm not talking shit on this book. Was it a five star read? Oh my god, everyone needs to read it. No, in my opinion. But I can see the hype because I did have a very fun time with it. So, fourth wing, have this. Oh, another one I've read. Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. I've also read Dead Romantics recently. Really enjoyed both of them. I think I prefer Dead Romantics out of the two because that one dealt, like delved more into grief and things. This is more like a lost connection kind of vibe. I said vibe again. Oh my God, Cody, stop saying vibe. <laughs> but this is a little bit sci-fi feeling. Again, really cute end papers and um, edges, lemons. Adorable. But yes, definitely sci-fi elements because we've got this apartment that our main character moves into. It was her aunt's apartment when her aunt sadly passes away. She gets to move in. But sometimes when she leaves the flat and then comes back in, there's been a time jump and she's seven years in the past. And she meets this guy seven years in the past who her aunt had said could go and stay at hers. Because during this period, her aunt was alive but was away, so she was like, a friend of a friend, this guy, he can come and stay at the apartment. So of course the relationship develops, but it's it's messy, isn't it? Because she can't always be there because she leaves and oh no, she's um, in the present tense again. So you're kind of following a romance in two time frames. It's interesting, but I really liked it. So I do recommend Seven Year Slip. Look, I think I'm becoming a little bit of a romance girly these days and I'm not mad at it. I really like Ashley Poston. <laughs> okay, last fairy loot ones, I think. I have another set. I have the Remnant Chronicles set. I love how the spines all match up on these. And oh my God, the edges for these is a blooming map and it goes all the way around. I'm obsessed. <laughs> Again, I've only read book one. I read The Kiss of Deception not that long ago and I liked it. I didn't love it, but I can see why it was popular at the time that it came out. It does have an intriguing premise because you have, you have two love interests. One of them is an assassin though that's meant to be killing this girl. The other one's the dude she's meant to marry. And you don't know which one is which. The author does play mind games with you. So the whole time you're reading this, you're like, which dude is the good guy? Which one's the assassin? And I did like it. I need to continue with the rest of the series, really. Another one. 
<laughs> I need to continue with. I think maybe this is going to be one where I'm going to be more invested and just like the second and third books more. The first one was definitely like a book of setup, you know how it be. So I have those two. Also, I've noticed I had them the wrong way around this whole time. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, now let's move into the rest of the fantasy stuff. And then I have uh, like a few contemporaries at the end. So I'm going to breeze through these. Um, so we have The Bone Season, the new version, because she changed it, didn't she? Um, I really like this series, so I will read this again at some point, so I wanted the new one, and also the cover's really pretty, so it got me. <laughs> oh, one from an auto-buy author. I will always buy whatever T. Kingfisher brings out, and they brought out Thornhedge, which is a kind of twisted fairy tale, if you will. I said it described as an inverted sleeping beauty, so it is a fantasy little short one. So we're following a fairy called Toadling in this one, who is tasked with offering a blessing of protection to a newborn child, only she screws it up and finds herself stuck in the human world until a knight who's intrigued by this old legend comes across Toadling and Toadling is forced to come out of hiding to protect the curse that she cast all those years ago. Really excited to see how T. Kingfisher has twisted the Sleeping Beauty tale in this one. I really like this author, as I said. I've still got a couple of their books on my TBR to read, but my favourites so far have been Nettle and Bone, hands down, great little dark fairy tale, but like found family, ah! And um, I also really liked The Hollow Places. T. Kingfisher's sense of humour, I just, they get me, they get me. The humour is always top notch in these, so hoping for the same thing with this one. This next one, I don't know how to describe it. I feel like no one knows how to describe it <laughs> from the reviews I've seen and like the synopsis is a little bit all over the place. So I'm gonna go into it, not looking into it too much. Like I just kind of want to go in and see, see how it be, but it's The Absolute Book by Elizabeth Knox. This is a fantasy, but it's also speculative. I've also kind of seen it in the category of what the fuck did I just read books. I've seen it described as starting as like a murder mystery, but then lots of other elements come into it and it gets a little bit messy, but like in a good way. <laughs> There's an ancient artifact, our main character has secrets. I, I don't, I don't want to know too much, you know, I just kind of want to go into it. I'm hoping it's like similar in terms of like atmosphere and tone as maybe the starless sea. I don't know, it could be a new favourite. These books that are a little bit hard to explain usually are my favourites I've found, but if you have tried this one, please let me know what your thoughts. I'd really love to know. Okay, the sun's completely gone down now. You can fully see my shadow. <laughs> Not too many left, I promise. So I found the sequel to The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Islington in a charity shop. And after buying their newer book that I showed earlier, I thought, well, if you like that, you'll probably want to read The Shadow of What Was Lost. And this is a pound or something. <laughs> so I have this one. All I really know about this series is that there is like a fantasy school, which is like enough for me to want to read it. I've also seen it compared to like Sanderson, Wheel of Time, but then with a little bit of like X-Men thrown in, which really intrigues me. So I have this. Oh, another sequel to a book I loved. I loved the first book. Well, it's like a companion sequel, right? Uh, Raven Song by TJ Klune. I loved Wolf Song. Oh my God, I loved Wolf Song. <laughs> it's werewolves. The characters are great. There is like the whole like hierarchy thing of alphas and whatnot in this, but it's more so found family vibes and beautiful gay romances. It does get a bit graphic in terms of like sexual content. Like not too graphic, but maybe more than you'd expect from TJ Klune in particular. Um, but I loved the first book and I have the second one now. So this follows like different characters, but characters that we have been introduced to and I think it's another romance and <sighs> I'm gonna read this when I need it you know when times are tough and you need that ultimate comfort escapism that is when I turn to TJ Klune he never does me wrong <laughs> so this might be more of a winter read for me because I don't like winter personally I get sad once autumn's over. Okay contemporaries again there's a bit of a theme with the next two so I have what you're looking for is in the library. And I have days at the Morisaki bookshop. I've heard better reviews of this one than, no, no, I've got it wrong. I've heard better reviews of this one than this one, but very similar in tone. So starting with this one, this one is for fans of the Midnight Library and Before the Coffee Gets Cold, apparently. This charming Japanese novel shows how the perfect book recommendation can change a reader's life. It's a book about books, there's a cat on the cover. You know I needed it. A friend of mine recently read it and loved it. Again, another one that I'm gonna save for when I need that comforting escapism. <laughs> and this one's all about how a bookshop changes this woman's life. Like she goes to live at the bookshop. I think it's her uncle's bookshop. Our main character is nursing a broken heart and then she discovers these worlds in these books and what books can do for people and the healing power of books. You know, just cozy goodness. 
Can't wait to try those. <laughs> you know, I said I'm a romance girly now. I really like Emily Henry too. So I've got You and Me on Vacation. I think it's called something different in the US. I think it's The People You Meet on Vacation. I don't know why they changed it. Um, but yeah, Emily Henry. I really liked Book Lovers and I really liked the other one. <laughs> what was it called? Happy Place. I liked both of those books. And this one is kind of like friends to lovers, but also second chance romance about these friends who would go on trips abroad every year it became like a tradition then something went wrong and now she's trying to start that up again with this guy could there be something between them you know um and i feel like i maybe just like the men that emily henry writes they seem to be quite similar from what i've seen so far um but yeah there's always something to do with like mental health in there or there was in happy place which i really appreciated book lovers i just really liked the guy <laughs> so i'm hoping i like this one too okay last two so I want to die but I want to eat topoki. <laughs> this is like a self-help memoir um, a woman who is just recounting conversations she's had with her therapist it's a bestseller in Korea and the reviews seem to be mixed on it but I feel like it could be quite charming and as someone who struggles with depression myself and also has had numerous therapists and whatnot I just feel like I might be able to relate somewhat and then last but by no means least, I have Idol Burning by Rin Usami. We're following a high school student who is obsessed with this particular guy, this J-pop idol. But then her idol is like publicly disgraced, does something bad, gets cancelled, or I believe he gets like cancelled, um, and then her world goes into a tailspin because what's she gonna do now that her, you know, idol is has fallen from grace? Yes, um, it's a international bestseller. So, and also I've heard that it really is like a good depiction of like a teenage girl's mind and inner workings. And I am intrigued. And that was the last book. <laughs> this was a long haul. I hope I can edit this down to a reasonable time. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed seeing everything I've been picking up recently. Please let me know your thoughts on these books if you have read them as I mentioned. Will you be trying any of these out or any of these on your TBR this month? Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me. Also a big thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. I love working with them and really appreciate it especially because I can't stop buying books. <laughs> especially in spooky season it appears. You watch this time next week there'll be there'll be more. There'll be more spooky books that I see and, and get too excited by. But please do let me know um, if you've read these what I should prioritise. Like is there anything that I've shown in this video that you like Cody? I gave this five stars you need to read this please help me figure out what to prioritize <laughs> okay i really appreciate you thank you again for watching um all of my socials and whatnot are linked down below if you want to catch up with me anywhere else please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and you want to do that and i will catch you in the next one my dudes bye y'all